this is the um, eighth grade review B for the nine weeks exam. So on number 17, we're selecting the box um, to identify if the equation is true or false. So for this first one, we have three squared raised to the fifth power. So we have a power raised to a power, and we want to see if it's equal to three to the seventh. So when we have a power raised to the power, we keep the base and multiply the exponents. So we get three to the tenth power. That is not three to the seventh power, so that is false. For this next one, we have three to the fourth power raised to the second power times three to the negative third power. Well, a power raised to a power, I'll just write this below it. A power raised to a power will be to keep the base, multiply the exponents, and now we have um, like bases that we're multiplying, so we keep the base and add the exponents. 8 plus negative 3 is 3 to the positive fifth power. We want to see if that's equal to what we get for 3 to the eighth power times 1 over 3 to the third power. Well, 3 to the third power is under 1, so we could move it to the numerator and change the sign. And we can tell now they're going to be the same. We get 3 to the 5th power. So these are equal. So this one is true. Whoops. Now for our next problem, we have 1 over 3 to the 4th power times 3 to the 5th power times 3 on the left side. That's like 3 to the negative 4th power times 3 to the 5th times 3, which would be to the invisible 1 power. So when we multiply like bases, we keep the base and add the exponents, which is 3 to the 2nd power. We want to see if that's equal to 3 raised to the 4 plus 5 plus 1 power. Well, we um, add those exponents. 4 plus 5 is 9 plus 1 is 10. And 3 squared is not equal to 3 to the 10th power, so that one is false. Now we have 3 to the 3rd power raised to the 3rd power times 3 to the 0 power. So we have a Keep the base, multiply the exponents. Keep the base, add the exponents. 9 plus 0 is 0. I'm sorry, 9 plus 0 is 9. We want to know if that's equal to 3 to the 3rd power times 3 to the 3rd power times 0. Anything times 0 is 0. So no, those are not equal. This is false. Our last one, we have 1 over 3 squared times 3 to the negative fifth power times 3 to the fourth power. We want to see if it's equal to 1 over 3 to the third power. So we have 3 to the negative second power because to change our exponent um, sign, we cross a fraction line. So we're multiplying like bases, so we'll add the exponents. So we get negative 3, 3 to the negative third power. We're going to see if that's equal to 1 over 3 to the third, which we move the base 3 to the numerator and change the sign, and these are equal, so this one is true. Okay, we want to know which equations have infinitely many solutions. That means we're going to get a number equal a number, and it is going to be true. So let's start with the first one. We have 5x equal 5 times x minus 1 plus 2. So we do distributive property and we get 5x minus 5 plus 2. And so that equals 5x, or so we get 5x equal 5x minus 3. Well, at this point, we've got the same term on each side. 
but one of them has nothing added. The other has negative 3 um, added, or we can say it's subtracting 3. So really, if we got to this step and we see that we're going to cancel them both out, we end up with 0 equal negative 3. That's false. So no, that one does not work. Our next problem, we have 3x minus 2x plus 4 equal 2 plus x plus 2. So we box in our like terms, combine them, we got x plus 4 equal. On this right side, we have 2 plus 2, which is 4. Well, these are the same. The left side and the right side are the same, so this is true. Our next equation, we have 11 minus 6x equal 2 times the group 3x plus 4. On the right side, we can distribute the 2 to get 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 4 is 8. And right here, we can tell that we have different x terms. They are different. So this will have one solution. If we solved it, we would end up with x equal a number. So we can go ahead and stop there. There's no need to finish working that one. Our next problem, we have 7x minus 2 equals 7 times the group x minus 2. So on the right side, we're going to distribute 7 to get 7x and negative 14. And right here, once we have our x terms on each side and we see they're the same, then we know that when we um, subtract 7x from both sides that it'll cancel out and our constants are different. So we could already tell at this step that there was no solution. So we're going to cross that one off. We're looking for infinite solutions. Our next problem, 12 minus 8x equal 2 times the group 5x plus 7. The left side stays the same. The right side, we're going to distribute. And notice that we have a different x term on each side. Since they differ, this will be one solution because we'll get x equals some number. So we can cross that one off. This last one, 3x minus 4 equal 3 times the group x minus 4 plus 8. So on that right side, 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12 plus 8. That right side, we can go ahead and combine like terms. Negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4. And right here, the left and right side are the same, so it's got infinitely many solutions. This problem number 19 is different for you. We're looking at slope. And here's the big thing. Slope is rise over run. So I'm going to find the slope of this segment IJ right here. So for IJ, we could say rise over run. The rise is from I to H, or H to I. And the run is from H to J, or J to H. And so that would be the slope for that line. We can look at this other line from K to M. We can say the slope for K to M is equal to the rise, which is from L to M, over run, which is from K to L. And so now let's look at these statements. Which statement is true? The first choice says the absolute value of the slope of the line is ML over JH. Well, let's see. ML is going to be right here over JH. Those are not the same um, triangles. We're, our slope's going to make a right triangle, which we'll understand a little later more in the year of why, but they're not even the same triangles, so we can eliminate that. C 
cross that off our list. B talks about the measure of angle L is less than the measure of angle H. They're both 90 degree angles if you look at them. They both make a right angle. So one's not going to be less than the other. So we're going to cross that one off. C, the absolute value of the slope of the line is equal to IH over HJ. Well, we had IH over JH, but that's the same thing as the segment HJ. So this would be true. And let's look at this last one just to test it. It says the absolute value of the line, of the slope of the line, is equal to KL, which is here, which is run instead of rise, over ML. It did run over rise. We can't do run over rise. So we cross that one off. Number 20, we're computing 4.5% of 5 times 10 to the 8th power. Remember that 4.5% is 4.5%. And I'm going to change that percent to a decimal, so I'm going to change it to 0 0.045. I just moved my decimal two places left. One, two, use the zero as a placeholder. So that number of means times, and in a parentheses, 5 times 10 raised to the 8th power. And I can just go to my calculator, type that in, and in scientific notation, I get 2.25 times 10 to the 7th power. So I've computed it. Now I'm going to read my question. It says, when expressing the answer in scientific notation, what is the power of 10? Well, it's 10 to the seventh power. That's my answer. 21. The lines graph below show the cost y of buying x pounds of fruit. One line shows the cost y of buying x pounds of apples, and the other shows the cost of buying um, x pounds of bananas. Based on the graph above, which of the following statements are true? The line representing the cost of apples has a smaller slope than the line representing the cost of bananas. Well, here's apples. It's a smaller slope. It's not as steep. So that is true. The next choice says um, the line representing the cost of apples has the same slope as the line representing the cost of bananas. Well, they're not the same, so that's just a false statement. The last choice says, uh, I'm sorry, the third choice says the line representing the cost of apples has a larger slope than the line representing the cost of apples. And I believe that should say bananas. But even if it were apples, that would still be a false statement in either case. So that won't work. The fourth choice says the cost of a pound of bananas is more than the cost of a pound of apples. Well, it is a steeper slope, so the cost of bananas is higher. That's true. The last choice says the cost of bananas is equal to the cost of apples. They're different slopes, so that's false. Slopes like um, your constant of proportionality from seventh grade if the line is steeper, then your um, equation that would show your cost is a larger value for your cost. Number 22, this is dealing with the right triangles again. We're given the two right triangles, PQR and RST, and these are used to determine slope. We remember that slope is equal to rise over run. And it says the slope of line, of line segment PR is equal to the slope of line segment RT because the ratio of blank is equal to the ratio of blank. So let's look at the ratio for PR. PR is here. So using rise over run, our rise is PQ, or we could name it as QP, that's the same. That's the rise. And then the run is from Q to R. Or we could say it's from R to Q. For RT, rise over run. 
for RT, rise is R to S, and run is from S to T. So PQ over QR here is equal to RS over ST here. Okay, number 23 will not be tested. And on top of that, I found an error right here. So this was not even a good question. So if you tried it, you know, I'm glad you tried it, but um, when it wasn't, the results may not be valid because there was an error in the question. So we'll move on. Number 24. Um, we have a music store that sells 75 CDs for $937.50. We've got an equation, y equals 6.25x, that represents the cost of buying X CDs from music store B. So part A, the, mu the price per CD at music store A or B is lower. So for music store A, there are uh, the CDs are $937.50 divided by 75 CDs. And we can just go to calculator and divide that. And we get 12.5, which means $12.50. For Music Store B, we're given an equation, y equal 6.25x, which means that each one is $6.25. So the price per CD at Music Store B is lower. The price per CD at Music Store B is blank the price of Music Store A. Well, $6.25 is what part of $12.50? It's half of it. This will not be tested this week. Number 25 will not be tested. It's a good question, but I'm going to go ahead and cross it off, and we're going to move on. Number 26, which expressions are equal to 5 to the negative third power? This is exponent rules. So 5 to the negative third power, which is the same thing as saying 1 over 5 to the positive third power. So we're looking for these results when we simplify. We could also write 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5, which is 125, which that is the, uh, the first choice. The second choice would not be the same, nor would the third choice. 5 times 5 times 5 is 5 to the positive third power. And this last choice, 5 times 5 to the negative 4th power, we know that's an invisible 1 with the 5, so we keep the base. When we're multiplying bases, we keep the base, add the exponents, so we get 5 to the negative 3rd power, which is the same. Number 27, we're matching the expression on the left to the value on the right. So for the first one, whoops. Sorry, for the first one, we have 2 to the negative 7th divided by 2 to the negative 9th. We're dividing like bases. We keep the base, subtract the exponents. So that equals 2 to the negative 7 minus negative 9, like saying negative 7 plus 9, which is 2, which is 4. Our second choice. 2 to the negative first divided by 2 squared, we keep the base, subtract the exponents, we get 2 to the negative third power, which is 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth. Our last choice, we multiply like bases, we keep the base, add the exponents, so that's 2 to the 4th power. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. And so we get 16. Number 28, the mass of a proton, and it gives us the value, it gives us the mass of an electron. Which answer is closest to the difference 
between the mass of a proton and that of an electron? Well, difference says subtract. So we're going to take the proton minus the electron. And so the mass of a proton was 1.673 times 10 to the negative 27th power of kilograms minus the mass of an electron is 9.109 times 10 to the negative 34 first power of kilograms. And we go to a calculator. And your calculator probably gives something like this, 1.672891 times 10 to the negative 27th power. But notice that it says closest to. That tells us we can estimate. Notice your answer choices go out three decimal places. So 1.672 times 10 to the negative 27th power is an estimate, and it's answer choice A. Number 29, we're going to identify whether each value is less than, equal to, or greater than 10. So we're going to start with x squared equals 75. We're going to square root both sides to get rid of that square. And the square root of 75 is 8.6 dot dot dot. So it is less than 10. Then we have x squared equal 100. So we're going to square root both sides. Square root of 100 is 10. So this one's equal to 10. Now we have x cubed equal 150. So we're going to take the cube root of both sides. The cube root of x cubed is just x. The cube root of 150 is 5.3 something. So it's going to be less than 10. x cubed equal 100. The cube root of x cubed is x. The cube root of 100 is 4.6 something, so it's going to be less than 10. x squared equal 125. Oops, we take the square root of both sides, and the square root of 125 is 11. Point something. And so it's greater than 10. Our last one, x cubed equal 1,000. We're going to take the cube root of both sides. The cube root of x cubed is just x. And then the cube root of 1,000 is 10. And so x is equal to 10 in this case. Number 30, the circumference of Earth measures about 2.5 times 10 to the 4th miles, and the circumference of Jupiter is about 2.75 times 10 to the 5th miles. Which statement is correct? Well, it tells us Jupiter's circumference is, so we have 2.75 times 10 to the 5th miles is, which means equal, about blank times... So this number times as many miles as the Earth's circumference, which is 2.5 times 10 to the fourth miles. So we might could look at this and kind of determine that it's a little over 10 times as many. Um, and so I'm going to say it's probably answer choice B, but I could go to my calculator and check. I could see if what I get on this right side equals the left. So I think I'm going to go in here, instead of working every one of these out, which I could, and see if it's true, I'm going to go through and just test out this one, 11 times 10 to the 0 power. So I'm going to put it in my calculator and see if this left side equals the right. So I type in, in parenthesis, 11 times 10 raised to the 0 power, close my parenthesis, times, in parenthesis, 2.5 times 10 
raised to the fourth power and enter. I'll make sure it's in scientific notation so I can come check it easily. And I do get that that right side is 2.75 times 10 to the fifth power, which is what we got for Jupiter. So answer choice B is true. I could have tested all my answer choices to see if it's true or false. You could have also taken the, the value for Jupiter and divided by the value of Earth and saw whether you got 1.1, 1 .1, 11 times 10 to the 0, 11 times 10 to the 1, or 1.1 1 .1 times 10 to the 9th power. Our last choice, number 31, tells us that a kilometer can be expressed as 1 times 10 to the 3rd meters, and a centimeter can be expressed as 1 times 10 to the negative 2nd meters. So we're going to select the options that correctly complete the sentence. A blank is blank times smaller than a blank. So first, let's notice which one is smaller. A kilometer is 1 times 10 to the positive third, and a centimeter is 1 times 10 to the negative second. And we know that a centimeter is smaller than a kilometer. We can also look at the fact it's got a negative exponent compared to a positive exponent. So this centimeter has the smaller number. So a centimeter is blank times smaller than a kilometer. Now let's see how many times smaller. We could take the centimeter and multiply by these choices to get what a kilometer would be. Or we could just take a kilometer and divide by a centimeter and see what we get, which is what I'm going to do. 1 times 10 to the third power divided by 1 times 10 to the negative second, whoops, negative second power. And I go to my calculator and I say, okay, in parenthesis, 1 times 10 to the third power, close parenthesis, divide by, open parenthesis, 1 times 10 to the negative second power, close a parenthesis, enter, and I'm going to change it to um, standard instead of scientific notation, but I get 1 followed by 5 zeros, which is the number 100,000.